If you have your Bibles, we can you can be turning to James, James chapter four. Uh, Jared had me a little nervous when he was hitting all around this, but uh, that is, that's the way the Lord works sometimes. Uh, I will make a comment. I enjoyed uh, Jared's lesson very much. And if you know, if you notice, there's always a consistency in false doctrine. They minimize God, especially Christ, and they maximize man. They make man more than he is. And that's why works uh, seem real to them as a means of salvation is because they, uh, uh, God needs your help. And uh, we know that's simply not true. If you have your Bibles again, James chapter 4, and we're going to begin reading in verse 13. James chapter 4, beginning in verse 13, the Bible says, Go to now, ye that say, Today or tomorrow we will go into such a city, and continue there a year, and buy and sell, and get gain. Whereas you know not what shall be, the morrow, shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time, and then vanish away. For that you ought to say, if the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that. But now you rejoice in your boastings. All such rejoicing is evil. Therefore, to him that knoweth to do God good, and doeth it not, to him it is sin. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you and we praise you for all that you do for us, for sustaining your church here at Dover, uh, for giving us your word, Lord, that you would uh, strengthen our little church together, Lord, that we might be a, a strong witness in the day that we live. God, we pray that you would bless your word to the hearts of those that are listening, and we would give you the praise for it. For it's in Christ's name we do pray. Amen. Now, uh, James is not the most familiar book in the Bible. And I think there's a lot of reasons that go into that. First of all, James is a book that demands works. And uh, Baptists, by large, don't like that. Now, what you have to look at in the difference, and not just the difference, but in the context of the Bible, that James does declare works, but he declares it because of salvation, not for salvation. And, and so we can conclude this from that matter, uh, that uh, if you're not if you're saved you're going to work and if you're not working probably you're not saved and that's why it's an uncomfortable book it is a book that almost did not make it into the King James Bible there were many disputes about it concerning the translators uh, uh, that uh, said that it did emphasize works and certainly it does but the reason it emphasizes them is so you can evaluate yourself. Not only are you working for Christ, but are you working for the right reasons? Are you working because he did save you? But all that set aside, what we're going to look at today is the day that James speaks of. How will you use this day? What will you do on this day to edify Christ? Uh, every day is a gift. Every day that we have is something that ought to be used for the Lord. And the flip side of that that we don't like to think about is no one is guaranteed tomorrow. Not one of us. And we like to kind of think about that in, in the realm of the elderly. And I was telling uh, uh, Brother Junior and Bella, there's a lady at the nursing home that's 99. And we would like to think that her day is before ours. But the, the simple fact of the matter is we don't know. So the day, you know what day you have to use? Today. That's the only day that right now you really have that could be useful for yourself and useful for Christ. Any other day is not guaranteed. And we think about it in that context, certainly we can look back and see that there's a lot of days 
in our life that were wasted, that were not used to edify Christ in, he, uh, in the way that he should. So uh, in verse 13 again, he says, Go to now, and ye that say, tomorrow, Today or tomorrow we will go into such a city, and they have a plan. Now, uh, what is your plan? Now, I've never seen this personally, but I, I know that uh, Adam and Sarah did. There was a, a missionary down there that had been in preparation to go for, like, what, 12 years? And I think he committed suicide eventually and, and never went anywhere. See, that, he wasn't thinking today, was he? And certainly we know that a missionary has to have some, a, a certain amount of money to make it, but I'm using that as an example to show he wasted a lot of time in preparation, did he not? Uh, I think we waste a lot of time spinning our wheels in preparation or study or, or, or work or some other thing when what we should really be doing is beginning to speak of Christ to other people. And you say, well, Brother Larry, I don't know enough. If he saved you, you can at least say, I don't know a lot, but this is what he did for me. And that, that is certainly what we as the Lord's people ought to be about doing, is speaking of the name of Christ every opportunity that we get. Whereas you know, whereas you, uh, whereas you, you know not what shall be on the morrow. Now, what does tomorrow have for you? Now, I don't know about you. Uh, my tomorrow is going to be a little bit different. First of all, I don't have to be at work as early as usual, which I'm glad. Uh, but on the typical day, and if I hadn't really just now remembered that I don't have to be at work till later tomorrow, I typically uh, wake up about 6. I get myself together for work, and then I hear Donna prowling around in the kitchen, and I know she's fixing my breakfast. I sit down and eat whatever she's prepared, and I'm at the nursing home by 7.15. And you know, that's my typical morning, and I kind of like it to click off that way. And, and, and you know what? Uh, we, as, we as flesh, we like predictable things, don't we? We like to do A, B, C, D. And we really get bent out of shape if it don't go that way. And, and that's just kind of our, our makeup, but this is the reality of it. We don't know D may become before A. You know, we always think of illness with age, don't we? I've had more illness in 55 years than my father-in-law has had in 85. Again, we just don't know, do we? We simply do not know. So what is your plan for tomorrow? And you say, well, I don't know, Brother Larry, and uh, a lot of us do different things. I'm sure that, uh, that Brother Jody's got things to do on the farm uh, tomorrow. I, I know uh, uh, my daughter-in-law will be uh, schooling Gracie tomorrow, and I know that Donna's got midwife visits, and we all have plans and thoughts what we're going to do. But in the end of it, we just don't know. You know what you have? You have right now. That's it. We, we, we think about that, and, and we really don't like it. But see, two things might happen before we arrive back at Bubba Smells this evening. Williams could be dead, or more imminently, the return of Christ. We just don't know. See, what we like in the modern day churches is urgency. You know, years ago, when I was a boy, you could feel that among God's people. They, they would run from a house to house because they felt like the imminent return of Christ could be any moment. In the modern day, we're a lot closer, right? But I don't see God's people behaving really in that way. I think that uh, they've come null and void to thinking there's always tomorrow. Verse 15. For what you ought to say, if the Lord will. 
Now in the modern day, and, and I try to use it, uh, sometimes I have to deliberately to think about it because, a lot, uh, it, again, the nature of the flesh is to be dependent. Uh, Lord willing. That's what we say in the modern day. Well, Lord willing, I'll be there. Yeah. You know what? First of all, it, it certainly does take that, doesn't it? You heard, though, they, they added something to it somewhere along the history line. And the Lord willing and the creek don't rise. Well, I always thought the creek was the creek like it bump smell or the one in Carlisle. But my dear Matthew, which he always likes to correct you, says it's actually the Creek Indian to Dad. And <laughs> I don't know where he came up with that, but I can see that too. But again, at least you acknowledge you don't know. If the Creek Indians rose and took out the settlers, you know they weren't going to be there. If the uh, Lord doesn't will you to live one more day, I guarantee you, you won't. So what are you doing with this precious day, this moment that we have right now? Now, this day we spring forward. Um, so what are we going to do with it? I'm a little tired. I, I had to work four, uh, eight hours yesterday with an eight-hour period between them. That's a very unusual kind of day. Uh, not real energetic. But I do have a day. I may be a little tired, but I do have a day. What am I going to do with it? Now, in, uh, in modern day, the way that we count days, uh, the old Jewish calendar had 13 months, each with 28 days, and that left you 360 days in a year as opposed to 365 like the English calendar has. But we know that that isn't even the way that God counts time because every year, like this year, you have a leap year, right? And that's because it actually doesn't take the, the, earth, uh, the earth 365 days to go around the uh, sun. It takes 365 days and one-fourth. And so you have to make up that day. Again, uh, what are you going to do with that extra day on the 29th? Now, another thing, even with that, and this wonderful corrective thing that someone came up with, Every day, and this is not just as the sun goes up, daylight hours, every day is really a minute longer than we count it. And that's how we get those extra days occasionally that come along in our calendar. Every day has an extra minute. What are you going to do? And if you want to get real specific, it's actually 59 seconds. It's not quite a minute. So what are we going to do with that? Well, well what's going to be our use of that time. Now, I'm probably the most guilty in the room. I waste too much time sitting in my chair scrolling. But now I will say this, the next generation is worse than me. What are we going to do with that time? Is that a productive time? Does that get something done for the cause of Christ? Now, uh, my wife and my children are, are, are very uh, watchful. and But, you know, a lot of that time, and those of you who are Facebook friends with me, a lot of that is spend time posting scripture. That's, that's what I do. But it's that time well spent. What are we going to do for the cause of Christ each day? What, what are you going to do that will be useful for the things of God, for the things that the Lord Jesus would have us to do? That is the question. Now, go with me to uh, the book of Psalms. Psalms 118, very familiar verses of Scripture. And uh, when Adam did this one, I must have been somewhere else, because when I was studying this morning, I noticed I did not have it marked. Psalms 118, uh, beginning in verse 18. Psalms 118, beginning in verse 18. The Bible says, The Lord hath chastened me sore, but he hath not given me over to death. 
Upon me, the gates of the righteousness, I will go into them. I will praise the Lord. The gate of the Lord unto the righteousness shall, in, uh, shall enter. I will praise thee, for thou hast heard me and art become my salvation. The stone which the builder refused has become the head of the corner. The Lord is doing, the Lord is doing, it is marvelous in our eyes. That is the day which the Lord hath made. This is the day which the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Now, one thing that you can do today, if you will, is rejoice in the name of the Lord. Uh, this is the day uh, I will rejoice and be glad in. Now, it's a beautiful day out there. Is it a little cool? Yeah. I'd like to see a little warmer today, but uh, we got the, pre the peach tree blooming. We got blue skies. We got the sun. What could be better? This is the day that the Lord has made. I I I'm going to rejoice. I'm going to be glad. It's a, it's a beautiful day out there. But how frequently do we really do that? Now, on the flip side, what if it's January and it's about 20 degrees out there and the snow's starting to fly and the roads are getting bad and my mother-in-law and my wife are saying, where's Eric, where's Larry, blah, 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 blah. Is that a day in which to rejoice? You see what I'm saying? When do we rejoice? I understand from the Word of God. Listen, it's all the time. There is something needful to give God the praise for every day. So we find that the first thing that we can do is just rejoice. Just be happy. Just be glad in the Lord. How many people do you see today that are really glad. I say it's few and far between. What I found working in public for 30 plus years now, somebody's always got something to be mad about and got something to be sad about. But very few people have something to be glad about. If you give them $100, I guarantee you'd be in the wrong side of the bills. You see what I'm saying? That's not a God. You know what that is? That's wasting time. That is wasting time where we could be saying, hey, did you see the hundred dollars I got? You know what? It's all in ones, but I got a hundred dollars. God's been good to me today. So how are we going to praise him? What are you going to do to lift up the name of Christ? What are you going to do to, to, to praise his name. This is the day. How many people have you told about Christ today? Now, this is our worship day in, in the church years. It is when we go down to the, the house of God, if we have one, and we lift up the name of Jesus. That's something to be done today. What about personally? When you say, when you sing, do you sing just because it's time to sing? Do you, do you turn over just because Brother Junior says we need to go to 42? Or do you get excited about it? Oh man, I like 42. What are we doing? Are, are we spinning our wheels? Are, are we going through a motion? Or do we really want this day to be something different? I, I think a lot of times we're just wasting our time. And sometimes would be well to do something else because we don't come here with a means of God to worship his name. It is needful. It is imperative. You ever left the church forward? I don't like to. Right. Could be my fault, could be your fault. But I tell you whose fault it ain't. It ain't God's fault. Alright, man. Alright? So we need to get to the we need to get to the point where we look and see how precious days are. 
irregardless of the circumstance, irregardless of the time, what can you do? Many years ago, many of was coming home from uh, a meeting in Ohio. Uh, kids were young, all of them were still at home. Adam probably wasn't but 12 or, 12 or 13. And this fella calls me and was going to correct me on the doctrines of election. And we talked for about four hours. Donna kept going. And, uh, uh, but you know what? I wanted, I wanted to talk with him, man. We was going up the down 65 and a tornado went by while we were talking. And I, I just kept talking to him and, and talking to him. And you know what? He called me about six days later and said, Larry, you're right. I'd say that was time well spent. We're still good friends today. He calls me all the time. That, I, I, and you know, a lot of things could do, and I'm sure Donna won't me to pay attention to driving through the tornado, but it was time well spent. It was one day that God worked. And when he first called me, he said, hey, man, I'm going to get you straightened out. And that's literally what he said to me. And I said, wait a minute. Uh, I want to say, only one's going to straighten me out is Herman Anglin. Uh, uh, that's our mortician. And, but uh, I, want, I, I took the time, you see, because I could have got angry. He called me a hard shell. I, I, I could have got angry and said, you know what? I don't have time for this. But, but you take your time. You see it as not, not as someone calling you names, even though he was. You see it as an opportunity. You say, this is the day that the Lord has given me. I'm going to do something meaningful for Christ. And when you begin to look for those opportunities, and you, you know what? We'll see. A lot of times the reason we don't see opportunities is because we don't use the opportunities. What about, uh, what about just, I know Donna, this is one of her Little ministers, I guess she does it, still does it. She takes one of our tracks and she might put it through the bank box or she might give it to a, a young lady that's her server at a table. And you know what? Nothing may ever come of it, but something might. This is the day. And, and you know what? That's a split second. A lot of times it's on Monday when, on Monday when she's running around with a chicken with her head cut off among the Amish, but she stops and gets gas, or, or she stops by the bank, or she, grabs, uh, or, or she grabs a meal somewhere, and it creates an opportunity so the day is not lost in its entirety. This is the day. You know what? Think about it right now. What if this is the last day you get? Now, we don't like to think that way, don't we? Do we? But we know if we be forthright with ourselves and we be honest, we know it's a distinct reality. And you don't have to be the you don't have to be in the oldest in the building, you don't have to be the youngest in the building. I was thinking about this as I was preparing uh, about Diane's young cousin that got killed in the automobile wreck. It was the youngest out of eight or nine cousins. He was younger than Diane's children. He was the first to die. Pretty scary, isn't it? It got, it got everyone's attention. So what are we going to do with it? Days are a lot more precious than we think, aren't they? And the only thing that really shakes us up is maybe when a death comes in the family, or, or when what we perceive as a premature death occurs. But listen, no one, you know this, no one has ever died prematurely. Because the days are appointed, right? right? They got to their day and it was time. The only reason we perceive it as premature is because of our own idea of age, right? This is the day. This is the day. This might be our last day. What are you doing for the cause of Christ? 
Acts chapter 9. Fairly familiar verses of Scripture. Uh, it's before the ministry of Paul. Peter is still uh, the operating things at Jerusalem. And he has had some experiences with uh, Gentile believers. Uh, and now we see something unusual. Acts chapter 9 and verse 36. Now there was at Joppa a certain disciple named Tabitha, which by interpretation is called Dorcas. The woman was full of good works and alms deeds, which she did. Now we have that, that word that we, we don't necessarily like as Baptist people, but it makes the statement, she was full of good works. She had done a lot, and we'll see, in, in a few moments, apparently she was some kind of seamstress, and, and she did a lot of things to make coats and clothes for other people, and, and she used the knowledge she had for the cause of Christ, and that's certainly what we should do as well. Not all of us are nurses, not all of us are seamstresses, not all of us are good cooks, but what you have been given, use for Christ. And you know what? Use it every day. Every day. And, and we, so we find that this woman uh, named Tabitha, or Dorcas, it's just the Jewish name and, and the Greek name, that they that she had been no, one, no doubt an example to other people. Verse 37. And it came to pass in those days that she was sick. Now, first of all, I want you to see that she used her well time. What was she doing in her good days? Her well time. Making coats. You know what I'm going to do tomorrow, Lord willing? <laughs> right? I'm going over to the nursing home and I'm going to take care of some old people. You know what Donna's going to do? She's going to go over in the Trigg County community and she's going to take care of women that are going to have a baby. And you know what? Both of us need to do it in the name of Christ. See, that makes all the difference. If you commit the vegetables when you plant them to Christ, you know what? You're going to get something out of them. So Dorcas or Tabitha had done all these good works. Did it exempt her from illness? No. Her careful following of the Lord, did that give her smooth sailing? No. Now Dorcas had done all this recognizable work, and Dorcas was sick. You know what that tells me? We're going to get sick. One day it may be that Larry ain't able to pastor no more. You better be looking for somebody new. You see what I'm saying? Uh, we all get in that condition. And, and, and so we find that, that this, uh, this hard worker for Christ that used her skills for the cause of Christ is now sick. And it came to pass in those days that she was sick and died. Pretty typical, ain't it? What are you going to do then? Now, would to God, if you're saved, you know what? My praises will just have begun when I die. But my work, if you will, is over. I'll never be able to tell one more person about Jesus that saves. That part of my work is completely done. Can't go back and redo any of it. Either I've done it or I've not done it. And so I ask you, uh, this this little bit, 24 hour, or if you want to get uh, real specific in a calendar, 24 hours and 59 uh, minutes, I mean 50, uh, 50 mi 59 seconds, what are you going to do with it on this day? It's very important that we answer that because if we don't, you know what it is if we don't think about it? 
it's simply wasted, right? Uh, if it didn't put no thought into it, uh, it wasn't used for the cause of Christ. The rest of verse 37, whom when they had washed, prepared her body, they laid her in an upper chamber. And for as much as Lida was not was not Joppa, and remember Joppa was the place where the man had the dream, and uh, uh, he so Peter is already in the area, and the disciples had heard that Peter was there. They sent unto him two men desiring him that he would not delay to come to them. Now, what do we always think? It's too late. Death. And certainly your time is up when that comes. But see, what we need to remember, Christ is greater than death. Christ is more, it, it is more prominent than death. Donna and I coded a man, CPR, full code, at a meeting one time. <laughs> and you know what? He lived and pastored for four more years after that, and he's still alive today. Mm -hmm. Now, was that the end me and Donna? No, it was just what we did used of God. But you know what everybody in that room thought? That his days were up. But Clarence Grigsby. But see, it simply wasn't. But we, we, we thought that, did we not? God gives grace, and we find that God gives grace to uh, Tabitha or Dorcas and brings her back to life. Now, we know that Peter is just the vehicle, just the prayer warrior, just the person that intercedes, and, and God brings to life. But we, we find that this woman, Tabitha, gets a second chance, if you will. Now, if, if Tabitha was already a go-getter, what was she now? And I believe she was. I mean, I, my hat's off to ladies. I could not, I, I would go insane even trying to sew. I just, I know myself well enough to know that. But you know what? I bet she sewed harder, don't you? <laughs> I, I, I bet I, I bet she cut her cloth a little quicker. I, may, I bet she made her hems a little straighter because she began to appreciate Christ even more. And you know what? <laughs> Most of us don't get that, do we? So we need to look at it just like Tabitha did. God's given us today. No guarantee of tomorrow. You, you know what? He's kept me alive for another day. Only him. Only because he purposed it so am I here right now. So what am I going to do with it? What are you going to do with it? Some of you here, again, at least at man's idea, are, are, have, uh, have more days behind than you have in front. Those of you that at least by man's eyes you have more days in front than you have behind. You know what? Young people, set your mind on serving Christ. If you really do have a lot of days in front of you, what a joy it will be to serve Him. Now the last thing I'm going to tell you, young people, there are going to be other Seekers of your time. Yeah. All around you every day. And again, we know the Bible is clear, man. We have to work. But it consumes a whole lot of your time. A whole lot of your time. Don't ever work a job where you have to have a call. <laughs> right? That just means you're working when you're not working. <laughs> We have to be careful, do we not? When you get home, spend time with your children. That's one of your greatest ministries. Make every 
moment count for Christ. Because some days they, at some point, our earthly ministry is done and the joy is just begun. 